Good morning, boys and girls. Right now, we're going to do some worship, but before that, we're going to pray. So put your hands up in the air, and guess what number we're going to count to? All right, let's do three. Ready? One, two, three. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone who's listening. I pray that we have a great time worshiping you, and that we learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first song I want to do is Fixing My Eyes on You. You guys ready? From the path that's right But I'll keep on seeking And keep on reaching And I'll follow, follow, follow Jesus Christ And I won't turn left and I won't turn right I will not stray from the path that's right But I'll keep on Jump, jump into the light, light, light Run, run, run away from what's not right Jump, jump, jump out of the dark, dark, dark Run to Jesus, give him your heart Sing again Jump, jump, jump into the light, light, light Run, run, run away from what's not right Jump, jump, jump out of the dark, dark, dark Run to Jesus, give him your heart
Well, hello, boys and girls. It is so very good to be with you once again. I cannot tell you how much I miss you. I miss you so, so, so much. Sometimes on Instagram and Facebook, I can see pictures of you, and that just blesses my heart. Some of you have been enjoying swimming. Others have had promotions and graduations. I just love seeing the pictures, and I can't believe how big you're all getting. I do miss you, and I can't wait till we're together again. Well, how many of you remember what we learned last week? I think last week's story is the saddest story ever. If you remember, we learned about the day Jesus was crucified. We learned about him being beaten. We learned about him being punched and his beard being taken out. We learned about the crown of thorns that they put on his head and blood dripped down. We learned about the robe that they put on him and how the soldiers mocked him and made fun of him and laughed at him and spit on his precious face. We also learned that he was taken to be crucified. Yes, he had to carry his cross and then he was put on the cross with nails in his arms and feet and he was forced with a spear in his side. And you know what he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, he was crucified in between two thieves, one on his right and one on his left. You know, it just shows how far Jesus will go to identify with us. And it shows how very much he loves us. And that's where we're going to pick up the story today. We have another color page this week, and you can get this color page if you go online. You can print it and color it yourself at home. Now, what do we see here? Yes, that's Jesus, and you know what? In this picture, he's not sleeping. They had taken him off the cross, and they had wrapped him and taken him to a tomb, and that's what we're going to learn about today. We're going to learn about these two men who they are, and what they did. And we're going to learn that the story does not end at the crucifixion. It doesn't even end at the tomb. Oh, when we have Jesus, there is always hope. And that is what we're going to learn about today. It says on the bottom of the color page, He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Only by the power of God can we live even though we die. That is from John eleven twenty five. 25. Now, before we get into our study today, let me see your hands. Ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Put them in your lap. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you that you, our most beloved Heavenly Father, sent Jesus to be crucified, to die, to rise again so that we can be forgiven of our sins and love you and serve you every day of our lives. We also thank you for the very special day that it is today, Father's Day. Lord, I pray that we would celebrate and honor our fathers, our uncles, our grandfathers, all those men that you have placed in our lives to love and take care of us. I pray that you would bless them and they would know how very much we love them. In Jesus' name, amen. I forgot to mention that in the very beginning. Did you know that today is a special day? Today is Father's Day. It is a day that we set aside every year to celebrate our dads and our grandpas and our uncles. And we want to make sure that we tell them how very much we love them and how thankful we are for them and that they take good care of us. We want to remember not to forget. 
that they are here to provide for us, to care for us, to love us, and to show us Jesus. And you know, if you don't have a dad here today, if you don't have one, please know that the hev our Heavenly Father is your dad. He calls himself our Abba Father, our daddy, and he takes good care of us, and he loves us so. So I hope that today you remember to color a special coloring page. You can get one on our website for your dads, maybe to make them something special or do something special for them, just to show how much you care and how thankful you are for them. We're going to begin our story today in Matthew, the book of Matthew at verse 27. Not 27, 57, at verse 57. And this begins the burial of Jesus. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. So we read from this story what's happened after Jesus was crucified. We know that Jesus died on the cross. And after he died, a man named Joseph, Joseph was from Arimathea, Joseph went up to Pilate and he said, Pilate, can I have the body of Jesus? Pilate said, of course, and he ordered that the body be taken down and given to Joseph. Now, what would Joseph want to do with Jesus's body? Well, Joseph was a follower of Jesus, and Joseph loved Jesus very much, and he wanted to make sure that he was properly buried. So he took him down off the cross. He wrapped him in a clean linen cloth, and he took them all the way to his own tomb. Joseph was a rich man, and men who had money would have tombs already prepared before they would die. And this tomb was new. No one had ever lain in it before. So he placed Jesus in his very own tomb, and he paid for this clean linen cloth and prepared Jesus for his burial. He couldn't quite finish because it was sundown and Sabbath was going to begin. So Joseph had a big stone rolled in front of the tomb. Now let's continue reading. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. So now the priests, the ones who ordered Jesus to be executed, and the Pharisees, they went to Pilate and this is what they said, Sir... We remember that while he was still alive, that the deceiver said, they called Jesus a deceiver. To deceive is to lie. Now we know that Jesus is not a liar. Why, he's the truth. That's what the Bible says. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. But those who didn't like him, like the Pharisees and the chief priests, they didn't see the truth. They called him a deceiver. But they remembered what Jesus taught. They remembered that he said in one, two, three days, in three days, he would rise again. Well, they didn't want that happening. So they called him a deceiver. And they wanted the order for the tomb to be made secure. They wanted that stone there. They wanted it sealed up. They wanted guards posted and watching so that nobody could take the body of Jesus. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. The last deception will be worse than the first. We know these chief priests and Pharisees, well, they were jealous of Jesus. 
That's why they wanted him dead. They were jealous that they had hate, envy, and murder in their hearts. And so they didn't want people following Jesus. So they called him a deceiver. And then they sealed up the tomb because they didn't want a deception going around that Jesus had been raised if he hadn't. They didn't want people following him. So Pilate answered, take a guard, go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. I love this because we know the end of the story. We know that Jesus does rise and he lives and he's alive today. But nobody can say that his body was stolen. Why? Because the Pharisees made sure they had that rock placed with the seal and the wax and the guards, so nobody came to take Jesus' body. You know, we learned a little bit about Joseph of Arimathea, the follower, who took Jesus down and prepared his body for burial and also put him in his own tomb. But in the book of John, John chapter 19, we learn about someone else. Oh, if you remember, we learned about this man a very long time ago. This man's name was Nicodemus. And Nicodemus at first met with Jesus at night. Years, three years ago, he, before this crucifixion, he met with Jesus at night and he asked him questions about being reborn and he didn't understand. And we know that he was one of the leaders in Israel. But look at what happens in John 19, beginning at verse 38. John 19, 38 says, Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. I already told you that part. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jews. So Joseph was a secret disciple. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus. Remember, Nicodemus was the one who went to Jesus at night to ask him questions about who Jesus was. The man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices, in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So now we get a little bit more of the story from John. We find out that another man helped prepare Jesus' body for burial. And this man's name was Nicodemus. And Nicodemus and Joseph both have something very much in common. They both followed Jesus. They were afraid. They didn't know what the Jews in the synagogue would do to them or say. They were afraid about what their friends thought, and what the leaders thought. So they followed Jesus but do you know what happened after Jesus' death? They weren't afraid anymore. They both went boldly to Pilate and they asked for Jesus' body and they wanted to prepare him for his burial. And that was a way they could show their love for Jesus openly. They were not afraid to go to Pilate and they were not afraid to show their love and do what needed to be done. Sometimes when situations are hard, we have to choose not to be afraid anymore. And as they openly love Jesus and show Jesus their love, it is my hope and my desire that we too would do the same, that we would love Jesus and that we would live for Jesus and that we would tell others about him, that we would tell them the good news that Jesus came, that he died for our sins, and rose again so that we could be forgiven and live forever with him in heaven. We don't have to be afraid. Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. 
And so we can live boldly and we can share about Jesus and we can show others the way to Jesus. And that is my heart, that you would learn and understand that from this young age and grow every day, grow with grace, grow in strength, grow in the knowledge of Jesus so that you can show others how to follow him and how to love him and how to live boldly for him. So let's remember what we learned today. We learned that Jesus had died on the cross. And after he died, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus asked Pilate for his body. They wrapped him in clean linen cloths. They prepared him for burial with oils and spices. They couldn't finish because the sun was setting. So they put him in the tomb. And then a stone was rolled over the tomb. Remember, the chief priests and the Pharisees didn't want anyone saying that Jesus had, ra had risen from the dead if his body was really stolen. So they made sure nobody could steal his body. They put wax and a seal around. They had a guard place so that nobody could steal the body. And you know what? Nobody stole the body. But I'll tell you what did happen. Jesus rose just like he said. And that's the story we're going to learn about next week. So let me see your hands. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you were obedient and that you died on the cross. And more than that, we thank you that you rose so that you can forgive us and that we could live forever with you in heaven. We pray that you would give us strength and courage and that we would not be afraid to walk with you, to follow you, and to tell others how much we love you. Be with every boy and girl. Lord, be with everyone watching. Watch over them, protect them, keep them. And on this special Father's Day, I pray that they would tell their fathers, their uncles, their grandpas, how very much they love them. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week.